In this JavaScript tutorial, you are going to learn how to program a numpad. Numpad is a part of several applications like calculator and ATM. So the script we are going to write can be used in the applications I named earlier as well as other applications where you need to get the value of the clicked button. Before we go further and start developing this application, make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like the video if you think it helps you. Okay, to develop this application, we need one HTML file, one JavaScript file, and one CSS file. CSS is not important here because we will be focusing on the JavaScript. So I want you to have full focus on the JavaScript and the HTML. The HTML structure is very important. So let's start with the HTML. I wrote the HTML in advance so that the tutorial won't become longer. Let me first introduce the HTML. Our entire application is inside a div which is called application wrapper. And right after the application wrapper, we have a paragraph to show the values of the clicked buttons. And this paragraph has an ID screen. Now comes the interesting part. We have another div called numpad which contains all the buttons. I have created three different rows of the buttons using three different divs and all of them have the same class. Now I want you to become alert and listen very carefully because this is the most important part of this application. All the buttons have three different attributes, class, ID, and value. ID must always be unique, so you can see all of them have their own unique ID. So using the ID, we can select a specific button in the JavaScript because the ID is always unique. The value attributes hold numbers same as the buttons. The third attribute is the class attribute. And here you will see I have assigned the same class to all the buttons. And this part is very important. In order to code a numpad, all the buttons must have the same class so that they can be easily selected by the JavaScript at once with the help of query selector all method. So remember this point. The buttons must have the same class. Otherwise, we have to select them one by one using the IDs. And in this case, our code will become very long and ineffective, right? So our HTML is ready. Let's now move on and write the JavaScript. In the JavaScript, we will make selections. We will select uh, this paragraph and all the buttons. So let's do it one by one. So here you see, using the query select all method and the class btn, we are able to select all the buttons at once. So this buttons variable is not a normal variable, it is a node list, which is an array-like structure. And it contains all the nine buttons that we have in our HTML. So let me print this variable out in the cancel and see what do we have inside it. So refresh the page and open the cancel. A node list is an array like structure, and you can also see our node list has nine components, nine buttons. And here you see all the buttons, right? Where the components have their indices. So you can see the indices value goes from zero to eight. So we have successfully selected all the buttons in the JavaScript. So now, after the selection, we need to register a click event to all the buttons. And for that, we need to loop through our node list because it contains several buttons. So to our node list, we are gonna apply for each function. For each function has a function variable, we can call it btn, and a function which is called for every btn. So this for each function gonna loop through this entire node list in ascending order. So in the first call, the first button is assigned to this btn variable and then the function is called for that button in the second call the second button is assigned to the btn variable and the function is called to the second button so inside the function to the every button you're gonna apply 
add event listener method in order to register the click event to all the buttons. And when the click is performed, a function is called, right? So to check if everything is working, you can write something in the console. Let's say write. So let's now refresh the page and click the first button. And here you see the right of a button is responding. Again, right? You can see all the buttons are responding to the click event. So now we know our buttons are working and they are responding. So now in order to get the value of the click button, we need to find out which button is raising the event. Right now, we don't have information about that. As you can see, all the buttons have their own separate click event, but they all are calling the same function. So we need to know which button is raising the event, which button is calling the function. If we know that, we can easily read its value. To solve this issue, in the JavaScript, we have something which is called event object. Event object is an argument that can be passed to the function which is attached to the event. An event object has the information about the HTML element raising the event. So this is our function and this function is attached to the click event. That means it can only be called when the event is raised. So we can pass the event object argument to the function like this. The letter E is the standard letter that we use to quote the event object. Otherwise, you can use any letter or you can use any word. So this event object has the information. It's going to tell us which button is raising the event. So we can console log. And in the log, we can write E dot target. Event objects target property going to give us the element. And if I refresh the page, click the button and you can see we have information about the button, right? The entire information. Now we know the button one is click. If I click the button number five, you can see button five in the JavaScript. Now we know the button five is clicked. So as we know which button is clicked, so we can read the value attribute. So the target gonna give us the entire HTML. If we are not interested. We are only interested in the value attribute. So to the target, we call the value property. And so now we will only get the value of the click button. So let me click and here you can see we are getting the values, right? Now we only need a variable to collect all the values and show the value to the web. Let's have a variable numbers and collect the values using the concatenation process like this. and put it on the page. That's it, our application is ready. So refresh the page and here you can see that, right? So my friends, that was a simple tutorial about how to program a numpad. I hope you're gonna like it. I will see you around, thanks for watching.